Hello friends, this is Nagda Kakkad from Accelerate AI Careers. Today we are solving Lead Code 37 Sudoku Solver, a very standard problem which has been asked in Meta, Amazon and Google interviews. This is the hard level problem on Lead Code. I'll first explain the problem itself, then walk you through the algorithm used to solve it and then finally we will code it. So I would suggest you code with me in parallel once I start coding and let me know in comments if you would like the explanation in Hindi as well. I can give it to you in Hindi. So now, any stage of our life we have solved Sudoku, right? We are all acquainted with Sudoku. But if not, I will explain the problem in detail to you. So in a Sudoku, it's a 9 by 9 grid. There are 9 cells in each row and there are 9 rows. And there are total 9 boxes. Each box is of dimension 3 by 3, as you can see here. Now, the condition for Sudoku is, a valid Sudoku is something where each digit occurs only once in each row, like from 1 to 9. Each digit occurs only once in each column, like 1 to 9. And each digit from 1 to 9 occurs only once in each 3 by 3 grid. We will call it a square, okay? Each 3 by 3 grid, we will refer to it as a square. So now the condition given in the question is that you have to fill this Sudoku or solve this Sudoku such that the Sudoku is valid. You also need to fill the Sudoku in the same space that is in place. So rather than returning a new matrix, you have to maintain the current state. That means we will be using global variables and we will be deleting those as and when we'll be proceeding further. And this is a classic backtrack problem. I will explain to you why. But right now, understand that when we as a human being try to solve this Sudoku problem, we usually pick up one digit from 1 to 9, try putting it here in one of the squares and see if the rows are still valid, if the columns are still valid, if the grid is still valid. And same thing, if it is valid, we'll instead the number there. Then we move to the next cell and we check if the number from 1 to 9 has occurred in the row, has occurred in the column and has occurred in the small grid. If yes, then we do not put it there. If not, then we substitute it there. And that's how we keep on pro proceeding one by one from each cell to another cell, one row to another row. And the same approach we use from one box to another box as well. And say, suppose we fill it with a number here, say two, and then we move to the next cell and then next cell, and then we realize that mm, the number two was not valid there. So we backtrack. So that's why this is a backtracking problem. And let's delve into the code and wherever you feel that the code is complex and not understanding it, mention in the comments, I will address and explain it to you in detail separately. So let's get started with the code. So now since we are doing it in place as a requirement of the question, so we will maintain some global variables also. For now, let me take three set. So set. This will be the set of digits for each row. And since we have nine rows, so I can just copy. And this will be true for columns as well. And the same thing would be true for the nine squares as well. Now, after that, let's first take in the values which already exist like the current state of the Sudoku like this which is partially filled so we need to in reinstate these numbers as is so for i nine because there are nine rows now now for j in range nine because there are nine columns and then we go we'll check the board Location of I, J is empty or not. If it is not empty, then go into this. That means there is some number there. So we will save that number in integer form. We have saved that number here in integer form. Now we will add that number to our so just to track that this number has already occurred or this number has already not occurred in the rows or columns. So we will add it to rows. 
I dot add. Now, in same way, we will add it to columns J because it's at the Jth index dot add. Now, now for square, since the squares are ranging from zero to eight, zero square. Then first square, second square, third square, fourth square, and so on till eight square. While your i and j are from the range one to nine and one to nine, like zero to nine and zero to nine. So the the nine by nine needs to be converted to three by three. So the formula for that, like calculating the index of square, like if you have to calculate this cell, this particular cell belongs to which three by three grid. So for doing that, you calculate square id. Equals to i by three multiplied by three plus j by three. That's how you compute the id. And now same way you add it to the squares square id. You add the num to s. So now you have tracked the number currently in i i by j th grid of the board. Now this is our entire initial initialization. Now we move to our base function, which is back. Now, since I told you that when we are backtracking, we also have to maintain in place a uh, ball in place grid. So then we have to use global variables. We'll use a global variable sort. So if if what is our success condition that we have reached till the end of the grid and we have filled out everything correctly. So reaching to the end of the grid would mean if i is equal to nine. And solved is equal to true. If i is equal to equal to nine, that means you have checked till ith index, ninth index. Then mark solved as true, and then return. This is your passing condition. Like all conditions have met. Now, what would be your next cell? So, say suppose you filled out this cell. Now you have to move to the next cell. To move to the next cell, you have to calculate the next cell's index. So that would be new i and new j. So how do you compute that? So new i would be current i plus. You have to take care of the condition when you have reached till the end of the row and you have to move to the next cell in the next row. So for that, you would do j plus one. This is and you have to that you increment i such that. End of row condition is maintained. I hope you understand. Yeah. So new J again. New J would be J plus one. Now again check board at this location I and J. You will check whether it is populated or not populated. If it is not empty, then you have to move to the next cell. If it is empty, you have to fill it in. So, in this case, when we are considering that it is not empty, then you backtrack and you move to the next cell itself because you it is already filled. So you don't need to do anything. You move to the next cell. That's it. But if it is empty, then and it is. So you will check numbers. Range one to nine, right? And in Python, the last letter is not considered, so it's one to ten essentially. And you will calculate the square ID. I will just copy the formula here. And you will check how the condition is valid for a valid Sudoku, right? If this num is not in any of the rows set. Rows I and it's now it's not in any of the columns set. Okay. Also, and this now is not in any of the square set. 
like three by three grid also should be unique, right? Square height. Then you can populate it, right? So rows i dot add num columns i dot add num squares square id dot add num and also you have to fill out the board i i j cell so i j but you have to fill it with a string XTRO. Now what if you need to backtrack? So backtrack after this next cell. And next cell you have computed the indices above new i and new j. Now if suppose that this this population of fields like board ij equal to string num does not solve Sudoku. Then then you have to backtrack, right? So if not so if, if it doesn't solve, then you have to remove everything. So I'll just copy these cells. And I'll just remove. And I'll just remove here. I will remove here. And this will be set to 0 again. So essentially, this would be. Correct. And here you are calling, so you are setting solved equal to false and calling it in the first cell, like zero row and zero column board backtrack zero zero, and that's how your your code is complete. Now let's uh, run our code and see how it performs. There was one correction I did in row number twenty nine. It's new j would be j plus 1 modulo 9, not divide 9. Uh, by mistake, I had put divide 9, so I will run it. Yes, yeah, so the solution is accepted and you can just submit it. Okay. Yeah, so looks good. Now, what is the time complexity and space complexity for the solution? So let's calculate the time complexity here. So you can see for every cell, say suppose I'm filling out this third cell here in first row, then there are nine values which I can consider, which would be one to nine, right? Then in the next cell, there would be eight values because one value I would have filled out in this cell. And then in the next cell, there would be seven values and so on. So basically to fill out one row, you can, you can have nine factorial ways, right? And you have total nine rows. So it would be 9 factorial to the power 9 because you are doing the same thing for each row. So 9 factorial to the power 9 would be your time complexity. I hope you understand and the question is clear. Mention your doubts in the comments. I will be able to address it. Subscribe to my channel if you like the content. I will be posting the next algorithm videos soon. If you have certain lead code problems and looking for the solution, let me know. I solve everything in Python and Java. Thank you.